Father dear, I often hear This is Chapel Lane Graveyard, to the north of Skibbereen Town in West Cork. The lofty scenes of valleys green, her mountains rude and wild. This graveyard featured prominently in reports during the Great Famine of the 1840s, and two very famous illustrations relating to Chapel Lane appeared in the newspaper The Illustrated London News in February 1847, including this one of a funeral making its way to Chapel Lane Graveyard. Oh son, I love my native land with energy and pride. The Skibbereen area was devastated by the Great Famine, losing one in three of its people to starvation, disease and emigration. My rent and taxes were too high and the areas around this graveyard were particularly badly affected, with horrific reports of suffering, especially from the nearby Windmill Hill and High Street areas. Oh, well, I do remember the bleak days and the second illustration from that era is of a small building called a watch house, which was located inside Chapel Lane Graveyard. A graveyard watch house was a small hut, once used by families for shelter while they watched over the graves of their loved ones for a few days after burial, in order to prevent body snatchers from digging them up and selling on the body for medical research. A group of evergreen trees in the centre of this graveyard now marks the site of the former watch house in Chapel Lane, sketched by the artist James Mahoney in 1847. Nothing remains of the watch house today, but we do have several descriptions of it, including one from local doctor Dan Donovan. On my return home, I remembered that I had yet a visit to pay having in the morning received a ticket to see six members of one family named Barrett who had been turned out of the cabin in which they lodged in the neighbourhood of Old Chapel Yard and who had struggled to this burying ground and literally entombed themselves in a small watch house. In this horrible den, in the midst of a mass of human putrefaction, six individuals labouring under most malignant fever, were huddled together as closely as were the dead in the graves around. Another description of the watch house comes from an American visitor in February 1847. The miserable shed had served as a grave where the dying could bury themselves. It was already walled round on the outside with an embankment of graves half way to the eaves. Removing a board from the entrance of this black hole of pestilence, we found it crammed with wan victims of the famine, ready and willing to perish.